Hare Krishna everyone, welcome back to Shravanam Diaries Podcast. I'm your host Sula Lita Devi Dasi and we're continuing to read The Science of Self-Realization, the book by His Divine Grace Srila A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, Chapter 8, Attaining Perfection, and the section is entitled The Highest Truth. Oh, I'm sorry, The Highest Love, of course. Yes, The Highest Love. Continuing. From the Srimad Bhagavatam, Lord Chaitanya gives an example of pure devotion. It is said in the Bhagavatam that Krishna is situated in everyone's heart. Therefore, just as rivers flow and their natural tendency is to reach the sea, so as soon as one hears the glories of the Lord, his soul is at once attracted toward the Supreme Lord. This is the beginning of pure devotional service. As soon as there is the chanting vibration, Hare Krishna, immediately Krishna's paraphernalia, Krishna's name, Krishna's fame, Krishna's abode, Krishna's associates, everything, all of a sudden become manifested within because he is present. This is the beginning of one's Krishna consciousness. To remember by reference to a context means that as soon as one hears a code word, one at once remembers all the information behind that code. Similarly, when our minds are attracted to Krishna and everything about Krishna, simply by hearing a little glorification of his qualities, that is the beginning of pure Krishna consciousness. Then there is no more gati or movement of the mind. It was just that way with the gopis. As soon as they heard the sound of Krishna's flute, they gave up everything. Some of them were lying down, some of them were working in their family affairs, some were taking care of their children. But as soon as they heard Krishna's flute, they forgot everything and rushed to him. Their husbands, their brothers, and their fathers said, Why are you going and leaving your duty? But they did not care. They simply left. There is no impediment and no stumbling block in that merge of the mind with Krishna. This is the beginning of pure devotion. Purushottama means Krishna. The word Purusha means enjoyer. The conditioned living entities are false enjoyers, imitation enjoyers. Here in this material world, all living entities are acting as Purushas. The more exact meaning of Purusha is male. The male is considered to be the enjoyer and the female is considered to be the enjoyed. In the material world, whether one has a male or a female body, everyone has the propensity to enjoy, and therefore everyone is called Purusha. But actually the only Purusha is the Supreme Lord. We, living entities, are His energy, and He is the Supreme Enjoyer. We are not Purusha. Energies are employed for enjoyment, and we are energies, instruments of the Supreme Person. Therefore, Purushottama is the Supreme Transcendental Person, Krishna. When our pure devotion for the Supreme Personality of Godhead is employed, and there are no impediments or stumbling blocks, 
That is the symptom of pure Krishna consciousness. There is no ambition or motive in pure Krishna consciousness. Every other transcendental function or mode of worship is backed by a motive. Someone wants salvation, someone wants material prosperity, someone wants to go to a higher planet. Someone wants to go to Krishna Loka. These ambitions should not be there. A pure devotee has no such ambitions. A pure devotee does not even desire to go to the supreme abode of Krishna. Of course, of course he goes, but he has no desire. He simply wants to engage himself fully in Krishna's service. There are different kinds of salvation. There is Salokya liberation, to live on the same planet as the Supreme Lord. The residents of the Vaikuntha planets live on the same planet as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Sarshti liberation means to have almost the same opulence as Narayana. The liberated individual soul can appear just like Narayana, with four hands, the four emblems, almost the same bodily features, the same opulence, the same ornaments, the same buildings, everything. Sarupya means to have the same form or features. Samipya means never to be far away, but always to be associated with the Supreme Lord. For example, just as we are sitting together, so one can associate with the Lord. This is called Samipya Mukti, the liberation of being nearer. Pure devotees, however, do not accept these various forms of liberation. They only want to be engaged in Krishna service. They are not concerned with any kind of liberation. Those who are actually Krishna conscious achieve the association of the Supreme Lord, but they do not desire it. Their only ambition is to be engaged in the transcendental loving service of the Lord. The highest perfection of devotional service, or Krishna consciousness, is exhibited when a devotee refuses to accept any benediction or profit from the Supreme Lord. Prahlad Maharaj was offered whatever he liked. He had only to ask for it. But he said, My Lord, I am your eternal servant. It is my duty to serve you. So how can I accept any benefit from it? Then I would not be your servant. I would be a merchant. He replied in that way. And that is the sign of pure person. Krishna is so kind, so kind, that he fulfills all the desires of a devotee even if one wants material benedictions. If at the bottom of the devotee's heart there is some desire, he also fulfills that. He is so kind. But the sublime position of bhakti yoga or devotional service is that a pure devotee refuses to accept the various kinds of liberation even if offered by the Supreme Lord. If one has material desires or motives within himself and for fulfillment of such desires, he engages himself in devotional service, the result will be that he will never get pure love of God. 
if one is thinking, I'm engaged in Krishna consciousness and Krishna's devotional service because I want such and such an opulence. That desire may be fulfilled, but he will never get such unalloyed love of Krishna as the gopis have. If one has a motive, even though he discharges his devotional duty, he still will not be able to reach the stage of pure love of Godhead. In a verse from the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, Rupa Goswami says, quote, As long as one desires some material benefit, bukti, or even if one wants salvation, mukti, then he must take those ghostly representations. Unquote. As long as that maya exists within one's heart, how can one enjoy the spiritual bliss derived from pure love of Godhead? In other words, if one has material desires or even a desire for salvation, he cannot attain pure love of Godhead. Pure devotion is devoid of all desires. It is simply to render loving service for its own sake. There is another example in the life of Rupa Goswami, which we shall read tomorrow. So thank you so much for tuning in today. The link to this book is in the description. Please check out our website, shravanamdiaries.com. And we shall see you tomorrow. Hare Krishna. Thank you.